you going guys? It's Jeff Ware here from bikereview.com.au and today I'm out testing the Aprilia Tuono V4 1100RR Bit of a mouthful So it comes in the RR and RF version The RF version is the Olin's blinged up top spec model This is the standard model but it's really far from standard uh, You know the upgrades over the big update in 2015 are pretty minimal but they're sort of uh, pretty good updates So it's got M50 Brembo calipers now Bigger 330mm rotors, a TFT dash, um, meets a Euro 4, um, an up and down quick shifter, some graphics and uh, cruise control as well. Um, and it's also got refined and retuned electronics, so they've, they've uh, done a lot of work to refine that ride by wire system that they introduced back in 2015, which has the wheelie control, the cornering ABS, the lift control at the rear wheel. Uh, and all the different engine modes, engine maps, traction control, blah, 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 everything you can imagine there. Um, so it's got heaps of features. It's got a lean angle sensor while you're riding where you can see what you're leaning, not that you can look at it. So it's got pretty much everything uh, an electronics fan would want to be entertained. Um, yeah, the, the TFT dash does everything. It does have a bit of a dark sort of tinted plastic screen over it though which makes it a bit hard to see. I haven't played around with all the settings yet but I am having a bit of trouble in the sun uh, seeing the TFT dash which is a bit of a shame because some other motorcycles that have them uh, don't have a cover over them and they're very bright. So what's it been like to ride today? Um, fantastic. I had only track tested the previous model Chris and Pommy had road tested them and both mentioned a, a little bit of a few niggles with the throttle particularly Chris he had the bike first and uh, he had a few problems with the uh, engine mapping and ride by wire response um, happy to say this one's really quite good it is a bit hunty in the low rpm but that's the nature of this aggressive engine as well um, you know it, it, it is a motor that likes to be ridden hard with lots of throttle inputs so don't expect to be able to cruise around slowly on this bike and, and it to be really good at those speeds. Out in the open road though, um, when you want to get aggressive on it, it's fantastic. So this is basically a sports bike for people that want to sit upright. It's a full on super naked. It's a uh, balls out, experienced riders only, angry, powerful, aggressive motorcycle. Um, this has got the sack suspension, but it's been fantastic. Uh, look, I've got a bit of work to do on the shock to get it set up how I like it. It's lacking in rebound damping. At the moment, it's bucking around a bit, um, but we will get there. Uh, I've still got the bike for another week. But the geometry's there, the bones are there. You know it's good. Even though I haven't got the suspension right, I'm still having a, a reasonably good time cornering it. Uh, but until I get those suspension settings just how I want them, I won't be able to push it really to how to the level I'd like to push it to. The Diablo Rosso, Rosso 3s are fantastic tyres. Um, you know, they're great for cruising around town off highway use or general use. You get good mileage out of them, but they're still great for cornering and they've got a really good profile. As you can see in some of the pics, you know, I could still get my knee down and everything like that, but also ride them on the highway. So even though it hasn't got the super courses on it, um, you know, you don't need them. These, these tyres work over a good wide range of conditions. The brakes, unbelievably powerful. You know, two fingers on the lever and you're stopping like this. Uh, the 330mm rotors are huge. The M50 calipers are the best you can get. Quick shifter, up and down quick shifter. Um, it shifts down beautifully, never misses a, a shift on the way down. The shifting on the way up uh, has been a little bit hit and miss for us. Like first to second seems to work okay, but there's a really long delay, maybe too many, many milliseconds. Uh, and the bike goes brr, bang, back into second. Second to third's pretty smooth. Third to fourth, I keep missing that. Uh, and then I have to shut the throttle and try and get it back up into fourth again. And it kind of sends you offline a little bit. So the upshifting hasn't been perfect on the quit shifter. But if you're riding aggressively and getting into it in the twisties and using high RPM, and the, the gearbox is carrying a bit of load from that torquey engine, uh, the quick shifter works quite well. It just pops into the next gear. Other little things, uh, the cruise control is good. The, the little toggle switch uh, on the top, the little joystick is a little bit hard to use in a glove. I actually can't really use it while I'm riding. And the clutch lever, it's a big span, it's a heavy clutch and the lever is non-adjustable, which I think for the price of the bike, 
definitely should come with an adjustable lever. The finish quality is as you would imagine. I think these are unbelievably well finished motorcycles, these Aprilias. They're the Bosch ABS system. It's top of the line, cornering ABS. It does everything you can imagine. You can read about it all in the tech breakouts. Um, and it's been faultless. The best way to tell that is that you just really can't feel it helping you, but you know it is. The bike moves around a little bit when you're braking hard into turns and stuff like that. Now this V4 has always been one of my favorite engines since I rode the very first RSV4 and um, I'm still a fan. Like I said, it's super aggressive. And I'll tell you what, once you get over about 5,000 RPM, this thing starts to haul and you better hang on. And from the mid range or onwards around 6,000 RPM to beyond nine or 10, it's freaking so fast. Um, you turn the wheelie control off really easily and it's just up on the back wheel. Um, so there's no, no doubt about the power of this thing. It's just apart from the KTM Super Duke, nothing really gets anywhere near this bike um, in the horsepower stakes. Some neat touches that Aprilia's have. I like the adjustable rear brake lever height. Uh, it's very easy, it's on an eccentric. That's been around since the early very first Tuanos. And that's the same on the gear lever here. Obviously front brake adjustment, handlebars are adjustable, all those type of nice things. Obviously it's just that clutch lever that's not. It's got the neat plastic engine covers on both sides and they actually look all right. They blend in with the engine, they block noise, they block heat and they protect your bike if you drop it. So I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, the muffler's huge and it's pretty ugly. Um, <laughs> as they pretty much all are these days. I mean, you wouldn't want to be a muffler designer, would you? Because everyone just thinks you've got your head screwed on backwards, but they've got to work with what they work with. Sound too bad? I'll start it up. Got a bit of a growl. Got a bit of a growl there. It's got a really nice intake growl when you're riding the bike. You think it's going to suck you into the throttle bodies, really. Um, so all that's kind of really good fun. It'd just be good to nice, put a nice little pipe on it uh, for a bit more of a meaty sound and lose a bit of weight there. Speaking of which, uh, it carries its weight quite high, this bike. Uh, so it can be a little bit intimidating. It's, it's heavy, especially with a full tank of fuel and it's got hardly any steering lock. So U-turns are very tricky. A really tall seat. So when you're trying to do a U-turn, you know, you have to put your foot down on it because just as you're about to catch your balance, you're completely running out of lock. It's got less lock than pretty much any bike I've ridden, uh, naked bike on the market. It's just really crazy. So um, that's tricky. So for the shorter riders, it might be a little bit hard to, uh, to ride. So make sure you go and have a good test ride on one before you part with your money. But for the full in-depth report anyway, read the test on bikereview.com.au. Like I said, it's just an overview. Not a huge amount of differences for this year, just little refinements. Uh, to give the customer a little bit more value and make us smile a little bit more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it, tell us about your Aprilia, and uh, you have a fantastic day. And like I said, check out the full test on bikereview.com.au. See you later.